Hello and welcome to After the Flag Retro Style. We're back here after an immense race today. We have seen a seventh different winner in 2020. 15 different riders on the podium in nine races. I'm Steve Day, joined by Simon Crayfire and Matt Burt. Uh, due to the change of schedule here today, we're going back to the old route in After the Flag. So it's good to be joined by our good buddy here, <laughs> Matt Burt. Guys, I don't really know where to start. I think the only thing we can do really is start by talking about the weather, which really changed things around. Fabio Quattararo probably woke up this morning believing this was his day. Championship lead, great rhythm in the dry, but just before the, the race started, Simon reported from pit lane, the rain was coming in, in it came, and from there, really, it destroyed not just Fabio's game plan, but every single Yamaha's game yeah. plan. I mean, I'll start with you, Matt, on Fabio. He drifted back, but I mean, it was a disaster from the start for those guys, with Rossi falling, going into turn three. Maverick, of course, getting caught up in it. I mean, Yamaha have had a dismal day from that front. Yeah, in the dry, it looked like it was going to be so good for Yamaha, didn't it? Fabio was clearly the big pre-race favourite for everybody. He looked so good in the dry, certainly in FP3 and in FP4. And you can imagine his heart must have sank. When was yeah. it? Three minutes before the lights went out, that rain started to fall. It's easy to forget, isn't it, that those guys, Fabio Quattararo and a bunch of other riders on the grid, they've got such little experience of racing in the wet. And it, it just went from bad to worse for Yamaha. Like you say, Steve Rossi down at turn three. Vignales caught up in that incident. There was problems as well for Franco Mormodelli. I think actually Fabio Quattararo deserves a lot of credit because in those conditions, so easy to make a mistake. He's got the championship at the back of his mind as well. So to bring it home, in the top 10, he'll see that as a job pretty well done. I mean, in, in, in a way, Simon, when you look at it, I mean, he's actually extended his championship lead, so it's not worked out too badly. But interesting, at the start of the weekend, when we had wet sessions, he decided to take a back seat and no risk because we thought it was going to be dry. Dry, yeah. Um, I don't think it was just that lack of uh, wet time, though. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know what you just said is um, why the Yamahas streaked backwards in the rain when they've been so, they were the favourites in the dry, um, all of them. And uh, I had a good, luckily, to have a good catch up with Wilco Zeelenberg 10 minutes ago. And he said that the Yamaha has, for some time, struggled to get, generate heat into the wet tyres. He said it's been a, a thing they've known about for a while and haven't had the wet time to really work on it, setting wise. He said when they first get out, it's like, oh, you know, scary. And in the end, when it's far too late, they're doing the times. It takes so long to get the temperature in. So, yeah, you, I mean, you saw with Valentino, he, it was basically closed throttle. The rear just came around on him, like, yeah, riding on. Unbelievable situation. I mean, in the end, we should just point out Danilo Petrucci is the, the race winner here. I mean, what a season this is. At the start, Matt, the, the Ducatis came out. They looked like they were bombing clear of the rest. It was Petrucci, Davizioso and Jack Miller, but as the race formed, others started to play their part coming into it. It was a really strange race, so hard to call. Alex Rins coming through from 16th. I mean, there's so many different talking points, but we should, of course, just mention, I mean, it's great to see Danilo Petrucci's yeah. smile back in his face, awesome. boys, isn't it? Absolutely awesome. And at one point, we thought it was going to be the Ducati dream, running away with their first lockout of a MotoGP podium. I loved it that Danilo Petrucci was back on the top step of the podium today. He's such a likeable, popular guy. It's been a real tough year, of course, dropped by Ducati. He struggled to get his head around that Michelin rear tyre this year. There's been all kinds of problems, injured before the first race in Jerez. He knew, I think, wet or dry, he was going to be fighting, certainly for the podium, but we know how good he is and the Ducati is in those rain conditions. He did not put a foot wrong in conditions where it was so easy to get caught out. Real big pressure came from Davizioso and Jack Miller and Alex Rins, and he did not buckle. I was super, super happy after all of his problems this year to see that big Petruc smile back on the top step. Yeah, super happy for Danilo. You know, I, you know, like all of us, we love him. Um, thing is, like uh, what, like Wilco said, the Dukes are obviously very good at getting the temperature into those wets early on because they mm. were. It was clear they had some advantage. The guys are good on them. Um, I felt, I mean, Davizioso clearly had some rear tyre issue, like you guys were saying in commentary, and whether it was electronics or what, because it's the same tyre, uh, electronics set up or bike set up because it looked destroyed. I haven't got had a chance to talk to them. I, um, then you get back to Jack, he was clearly angry, and that told me he believed he could do the job today, you know, and it was ro robbed off him. 
we just caught up with him and uh, he confirmed that. He really felt he could go for the win, you know. He was sitting there and that bike that let him down, I, I checked with the team and they said, um, everyone I spoke to there said, oh, you better ask uh, the, the team manager, you know, what the story is, we can't tell you. I, I couldn't find Guidotti, so I spoke with Jack's crew chief, very nice guy. He wouldn't tell me either. He just said, electronics problem, and then walked <laughs> off laughing. So it was a terminal one, Mystery you know. Mystery electrical yeah. fault again, was And it? guys, he, Jack had a problem with that earlier in the weekend, and he wasn't going to use that bike, but the rain came, and he ended up having to jump on, wow. rain setting. It's amazing, isn't it, how the rain has changed the complex of the race and the championship in so many other ways. We just mentioned there Jack Miller, just in case you don't know already. Blimey, makes a racket. <laughs> just in case you don't know already, uh, that, of course, Jack Miller was in a, he had a, some, such a great position to fight. Heartbreaking for him to go out. And Davizioso as well, as Simon's just alluded to, ran out of tyre in the end. So what that means is there's two other people on the podium. Alex Marquez being the rider in oh. second. Now, who would have predicted that wow. from 18th he on the grid? It too. Wow, but not just that, guys. This is his first ever wet race. I know. How but has that happened? He did not look like a novice in the rain conditions. I mean, these motorcycles, yeah, they knock power out of it, but they're still 300 horsepower missiles. I mean, Alex rode absolutely incredible. Given his experience, his track time in rain conditions, we know the mm. Honda's hard to ride, rain or dry. If he hadn't started 18th, he had a great shout at winning that race today because yes. his speed was phenomenal. He had so much work to do to get through the pack. And when he did it, I'm so delighted for him because, you know, people will always say, oh, Alex Marquez, factory Honda ride, all because of who his brother is, exactly. blah, 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 yeah, all yeah. that kind of rubbish. Yeah. The guy is in that team on pure merit. And he rode absolutely sensational today. And I think as well, that's going to give him a huge lift as well in the future in the dry. And you to know, be fair, he has been coming over the last dry yes, races. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think any of us saw that coming from Alex today, but I take my hat off to him because it was absolutely remarkable. And who would have thought Honda's first podium of the season <laughs> would know, have come from Alex Marquez and with brother Mark to come back as well. Looks like the good times might be coming back to Honda pretty soon. Yeah, ride of the day, I think, from yes. Alex Marquez. Oh, yeah, no, clearly. Yeah. Um, Matt covered it really, like especially for a rookie with no experience in the rain to ride like that without a mistake when it was so easy to. Yeah, yeah absolutely brilliant. I had to uh, throw in there to Alberto Puj, your bike's really good <laughs> yeah. in the rain. That, <laughs> but, um, really, that the long thing blossoming is, relationship. Yeah, yeah, no, he's good, he's good. Um, uh, the, th the thing is, the Honda guy is always complaining about rear grip on entry and exit, and maybe it just feels like that in the wet. <laughs> yeah. Well, Do Dovi just missed out on the podium, and that's because Polis Bargaro managed to get on the podium. It's his third of the year in the wet as well. Uh, on another day, maybe, he could have fought for victory as well, but both he and Miguel Oliveira coming through towards the end, that will give KTM great confidence because it wasn't looking like they were going to be able to fight for that podium in the dry. No, I think Polis Bargaro, we know the KTM, they love to use either the medium or the hard front tyre, and in the dry they struggled with support in those hard braking zones, which is what the KTM really, really needs. You know, Pol again rode a really, really strong race. I mean, those three guys that were on the podium, it looked like from the outside, they were the guys that made the least mistakes or they had the least problems to contend with. Uh, Miguel Oliveira was riding fantastic, but we could clearly see, like, like Dovi, he hit some rear grip issues late on and I want to mention as well I mean Joan Zarco yeah, well. his last 10 laps were scary I mean how quick was he low 143s for fun way way quicker than anybody else I mean if Joan had got going a little bit earlier on well we might have heard Le Marcier's ringing out after the race here for a, a home win yeah fantastic going back to the KTM's um, it was another really hard fought podium for Paul you know yeah. he really worked for it and uh, I think he's doing a really good job here yeah, hats off to Miguel being so close yeah. behind them. A couple of mentions for some riders that unfortunately didn't make it today. First of all, Alex Rins. Now, from 16th on the grid, what a start he made. And it was looking like potentially being a wet race win in Le Mans in the wet, much like Christopher Mullen did yeah. back in 2007. But ultimately, guys, not to be. And I couldn't believe he was going so fast on the medium medium against everyone on most yeah. people on uh, soft or medium front, but all on the soft rear and he was running with them. Uh, yeah, because everybody else who started on the mediums took a little while to get yes, up to speed apart yeah, from Rins. Yeah, impressive. I thought he might make a mistake early on and he didn't. And by, by the time he did, I thought he was safe. So yeah, it's so difficult to pick who's going to do yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, in many respects, the rain in some strange way actually helps 
Alex today because he qualified way, way down. He was struggling big style in the dry conditions and we know he's strong in the rain. I mean, the last time we had a full wet race pre today was Valencia 2018 when he was super, super strong, just like uh, Polis Bargaro was. Real unfortunate. I mean, Alex has wasted a couple of big chances, hasn't he? You think mm. back to the Red Bull ring when he crashed out of the lead. Today was another great chance to fight for the victory at least. And that's another one that's got away from him, unfortunately. It an was another great chance because it didn't look like Suzuki, like KTM, were going to do anything in the dry, yeah, did it? Yeah, exactly. No, yeah, and of course, yeah. Juan Mir struggled uh, a little bit today as well. I mean, ultimately, he's not lost too much ground to Fabio Quattararo. Mir will get another chance in Aragon. Uh, Cal Crutchlow, we've got to talk about. He'll be really gutted when he watches back the race as well because he was in contention. He was there with... Alex Marquez at that time could well have been a podium for him. I mean, in the end, his LCR teammate taking another top 10, Nakagami in six, but Cal, he'll be gutted. I think Cal will be, I'm guessing, but I think he'll be really disappointed with himself to fall because it was a real opportunity, you know. Um, he, Cal was strong all weekend from uh, first practice right through to the race, you know, qualifying the whole lot and a real shame to lose it, you know. Like, I, f I feel sorry for him. Yeah, got to give him when you think of everything that Cal has put himself through, just to be sat on the grid is an incredible achievement. I mean, the, the guy's physical condition is nowhere near 100%, and we know what it's like, or Simon certainly does some muscle around a MotoGP bike. It's such hard work, and Cal's had to dig so, so deep. And he will know, like you say, Steve, it was a wasted chance for him today because he looked so, so good coming back into that podium batter, but unfortunately, we'll never know. Of course, Cal Crutchlow is looking to try and get the Aprilia ride. Ultimately, we have to cross Aprilia. Relatius Bygra had a bit of a quiet day, I think it's fair to say. Bradley Smith got a great start, great chance, but ultimately going down. Much like Cal, yeah. I really thought they, those two were going to do something, you know, the Brit, you know, yeah. in the rain. I really thought they were going to do something, but yeah, Brad uh, lost it. Glad they're not, neither of them are badly hurt. Um, I just got to throw in, it's the three J's that I feel most sorry for today. That's like... Um, Jake Dixon, Jack Miller, and Joe Roberts. All of those guys looked like and believed they were going to fight for the win, and it, yeah, didn't happen. So yeah, I just thought I'd throw that in. Uh, ultimately, in Moto2, just in case you're not aware, Sam Lowe's winning the race, but you need to watch that one back, <laughs> and you'll probably understand a little bit more about what Simon Crafar is saying. Guys, from here, of course, we move in to Aragon now. Where, where are we in this World Championship? I mean, is it purely just because of the points advantage he has that Fabio Quattaro still is the favourite for this World Championship, despite what's happened today? I think, personally, a lot now is going to depend on when a certain number 93, by the <laughs> name of Mark Marquez, decides he's fit enough to come back. Because, make no mistake, he's only going to come back when he thinks he's got a realistic chance of fighting at the front and showing these guys who's the boss. I still think, based on recent form, despite today, it's going to be a shootout between Quattararo and Mir for the championship. You can't discount Vinales or Andrea De Vizioso, but I think over the last few weeks we've seen Quattararo and Mir in the dry have just had that little bit extra. But I can't help but feel Mark Marquez is going to have some kind of pivotal role to play in these last five races. Matt's what right. Mark's going to get in the get amongst the pigeons, <laughs> sure. Um, but we're going to Aragon now, and I think the Yamaha guys have lost, with that rain, they've lost a massive opportunity because I think Yara y Yamaha is going to get hammered at Aragon. Wow. I think the KTMs and the Jukes, um, probably Hondas as well, the V4s are going to give those inline bikes a hard time. Maybe Suzuki will hang on in there, but I really think... They're not going to be favourites like they were here, the well, Yamahas. that's all we've got time for. Let's wrap this one up because we've got quite a lot to come and we need some rest because basically <laughs> we've got five races coming up in the next six weeks. Thanks for joining us. Seven different winners in nine races. And hey, who would bet against it being eight when we go to Aragon next time out? Thanks for joining us here in Le Mans. The championship is wide open. We'll see you in a few days over in Spain. We are underway in the French Grand Prix. A good start there, actually, from Jack Miller. Oh, oh God. Rossi has gone down. down. Tino Rossi's gone down. Oh, here, oh, here oh, comes Petro. Oh, here comes Danilo. And all Dolly was in. Oh, oh here comes Ren. Oh, there's all contact everywhere. How has this happened? Miller puts his arm yeah, up. He's, he's got to allow him back Jack Miller's got a problem. Hand off oh, from no. Jack Miller. Hand off from Miller. Here he's out. He's got smoke coming he out of the back of the bike. Oh, oh Rins is oh, down. Rins is gone. Well. In second place. Here he comes then, side by side, Alex Marquez. And Marquez is through. He's up into second place. Oh, oh, look at Polis Varga. Yeah. Up the inside. And Dobby now, not even on the podium.
take a bow. Danilo Petrucci has won the French Grand Prix.